This is day number six of the November 92 seven-day retreat in Springwater. I have summarized something that has come up in many meetings and is always coming up. Watching myself, becoming aware how conditioned we are, how imprisoned, how judgmental, how caught up in thought, how fearful, how angry, how separate from others and divided within ourselves. The question inevitably comes up, what am I going to do with all that? Can I get out of it? Can I be free of it? Free of my constant reactiveness. All the patterns that begin to emerge. Becoming aware of patterned reactions, reflexes, defensiveness, hurt. or an, a heavy inertia. Sort of knowing what I'm doing isn't quite right, but not being able to get out of it. Sticking with pleasurable ways. I'm not saying this judgmentally, because this is part of what we're going to talk about. I'm just describing what comes up for us and lurking there all the time is the judgment. I shouldn't be like this, I should be different. I don't like what I see. It depresses me. I don't want to be depressed, but looking, becoming aware of what's there, how depressive, all the stuff. Seems it never changes. I'm sort of quoting us in our thoughts and in what we express to each other in meetings. copied a paragraph from a letter someone wrote. He had just arrived during retreat, a person who was on staff for a long time. And this is what he wrote. In spring water there was too much distrust of self. Since the self was the cause of all conflict, how could it be otherwise? I feel there was also a shared distrust and discomfort with certain feelings like anger, and at times with the whole process of feeling itself. Why? Why is it so difficult? I think we came to that question yesterday, didn't we? Why is it so difficult, so difficult to simply be with what is? Find out about it, discover it, feel it. Be with it, not know the next step, not know the outcome, whether it'll go away today, tomorrow, in 30 years. But here it is. 
and not assign blame to oneself or others. That's a step away, many steps away, fault finding. I shouldn't be this way. It's because of my parents or because of my situation. Then we're not there as we are. It's all because of myself. I don't know, do we talk like this? Do we say it's because of the self? Distrust the self? If there isn't any self, it's just thoughts. Find out for yourself. I'm not making proclamations to be accepted. But what is this self that we blame? Or that we think we're blaming? And then I shouldn't have a self. I shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't have fear. Denying it. Is that what we're doing? Why is it so difficult to, to be in touch with something that's unpleasant, depressing, upsetting? Feeling dangerous. Is it possible to, to be in the presence of this moving stuff? It's always moving. It's never the same from one moment to the next if there's some alertness. Because if we think it's the same, then we think the same thoughts and therefore it appears to be the same. But this body, mind, the senses are, are constantly changing. Picking up new, new things that are happening inside out. Why interpret what's coming in? Why interpret what's being felt? Why know it? It's so, such, a, such a heavy response. So quick, so automatic. It's there before we feel we've had a choice to, to do it, to be that way, to react to judge, it's already happened. Can one appreciate the momentum, the instantaneousness of our reactive reflexes, defensiveness, fear, and then escape from fear, not wanting to touch it? Marvel at the power of it. and yet not assume that it's inevitable and unchangeably so. Because whatever happens this instant, reaction or reaction against the reaction, fear, anger underneath the fear, or fear underneath the anger, it's there. And if we don't know it, don't, don't label it, don't reject it or accept it. Just a, a, an open wondering of what is unfolding in this human being from one moment to the next. That it's simple. hard to be simple, isn't it? Or is it? Sun streaming through the window, certain sweatiness, the heart is beating, breathing, Slight, slight sound of wind. Not 
so slight. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, smiling, maybe a pain in the back, in the knees. talking to, like this last night, someone said, yeah, but there is this voice that says, I can't believe that this is it. <laughs> and it isn't it. It isn't it. Nothing is it. <laughs> so don't believe it. Don't, don't believe anything. And don't disbelieve anything. Don't get caught up in that. Just... Huh, what's there? The, the presence of it, the ungraspableness of it, the utter elusiveness of it, because by the time we've named it and labeled it and categorized it, it's already gone. Only the label sticks, the memory. But not this ungraspable, unfathomable movement of no movement. How, how can there be lightness about discovering about ourselves? Is it possible at times to laugh, smile at all of these things that are coming out? It's not my fault, it's nobody's fault. It's what has evolved and unfolded in humankind since countless generations. Here it is. What is it? There. It, it, it's there. There and, and, and not, not there. If one doesn't hold on to it or, or put energy into suppressing it, it's like trying to suppress a guerrilla movement. You give energy to it. Somebody, somebody said last night, something has happened. The shit moves easier through the mind. Yeah, let it move easy. Not, not make it heavy. And how do we make it heavy? Let's observe that. How do we make our stuff heavy? So that it weighs and depresses and, 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 and causes guilt feelings or uh, escape and denial. What makes it so heavy? Can we listen in? Can we wiretap into the headlines, the weighted headlines about ourselves, how poor we are, how victimized we are, to be pitied, or whatever. It, it changed, too. We usually suffer from the story we write or think about ourselves and not from what is actually happening. What's actually happening if felt, been with, moves and changes lightly. But uh, the commentary, the editorials, they're heavy. They, they are the, the, what depresses us. Our assessment of the situation. And the assessment is not free, it is conditioned by how we've been assessed, how other, others have assessed us, or how we have assessed ourselves according to ideal imagery, what we should be like or shouldn't be like, would like to be like. Can, can that be exposed in flickers or periods of awareness? how we talk about ourselves and how that impacts the whole mood of the mind and body. And it doesn't have to continue. The story can stop. 
We don't have to continue talking to ourselves about ourselves. We don't have to continue talking to others about ourselves. I don't say we shouldn't. Yes, we have group meetings here. It's, it's fine to do this. But to be aware of what it does, to become wise as we go, as we wiretap and listen, not just to what has just happened, but what we make of it in our analysis, description. Now we cling to that and think it's telling us the truth. It's not. It's just a story. Thought can never tell us what is. What is is not tellable. It's there and it changes and moves all the time. In, in a vast space that doesn't move at all. That's still and open and full of sunshine. Light. Even when it's dark, when the clouds are there, it can be light listening to this story and, and, and seeing lightly what I'm doing, what is happening. And then, then one notices how one, one doesn't want to stop talking. One wants to keep, keep it up. It's such a habit. Habits have their own momentum just from having run so many thousands of years for no other reason. They give some feeling of familiarity or whatever it all is. The explanation isn't the watching, how one wants to keep up with this habit of talking to oneself about oneself, assessing one's fate, and then suffering from it. becoming a hero or a heroine. We do that too. I'm talking right now about the burdensome aspects of our thought stories. I'm not talking about the pleasurable ones. We, we all know them. It's the same thing but with a different chemical accompaniment. That's what, that's what thoughts are doing. Thoughts are chemicals. Instantly a thought triggers chemicals which transmit information throughout the organism. And not only that, other organs also manufacture the same chemicals. Angering, grieving, depressing. The liver, the immune system, the heart. This is being discovered, people who are investigating this, that thought now has been, has been pegged or has been found to be a, a chemical transmission throughout the body, and not just produced in the brain, but also produced by all the rest of the organs. The body acts as a whole with its moods. That's why it's so, so, so useless to say, well, I shouldn't be afraid because one fearful thought and the chemicals are released. It happens faster than one's intention not to be, not to be afraid. But once it's happened, once the fearful thought has triggered the 10,000 or 30,000 chemicals, I don't know how many, then, then what? When does a quiet listening to, to the cacophony of what's going on, the, the, the tension, the stress, the, the disagreeableness of uh, whatever has been triggered, when, when does the listening start to that without adding more thoughts of I shouldn't be afraid? After 20 years of of, of, of sitting meditation. What a shame. 
og har sendt for. See, these thoughts keep on adding chemicals, keep, keeping, keeping the body in turmoil, in conflicting turmoil, because one says, be afraid and, and do whatever it needs to, to run from danger or to freeze from danger or attack out of danger. It's one set of chemicals says that, the other says, don't be afraid, it's bad, it's shameful. What a mess is created. Which, amazingly enough, if the body at one point is left alone, just listened to, allowed to deal with all of that, it will, it does, has an amazing, amazing intrinsic wisdom to come to balance, to restore balance, and to, to react unfortunately, reacting to fearful thoughts which do not indicate real fear. It's just imagined fear, but that the body cannot tell. It is incapable of distinguishing between actual concrete fear which needs running and therefore needs all the adrenaline and a, a fearful thought which just makes all that stuff feel uncomfortable because we're still sitting not running. Not using up what is, uh, what is uh, triggered in, a, in the proper way. Because this is what, what all of us who've been, and most people have been in emergencies, they know it. If a, an emergency strikes and needs action, then uh, there is tremendous energy there to deal with it to rescue somebody from a pond or get out of a, a burning building or p put water on the fire. A person once told me that his pickup truck was overturned, his friend was underneath it and he by his own strength uh, lifted, t turned over that pickup truck. And I don't think he was exaggerating. It wasn't that kind of a situation to do it, to exaggerate. So if we can, can use what the body supplies intelligently, assuming it's a, the proper, the real danger, if that's being used and there is the, the, the freedom of, of, of appropriate response and the clearing of this stuff, it doesn't linger. The, the organismic mobilization. It doesn't linger. It's used properly. The, the policeman who pulled a, a black teenager out from under the Nimitz freeway that had collapsed in Oakland during the earthquake and then saying, amazing, I pulled him out another time. In normal time, I would have arrested him because he's black and a teenager. See, at, at that moment, it wasn't black or white or teenager. It was just help. So, can, can a, a new leaf turn over? No matter what we did, that we thought it was the self and it shouldn't, we shouldn't have a self and we shouldn't be afraid, let all of that go and, and, and be with what's there and watch the conditioned responses which still want to say you shouldn't be like this. It won't all go away, but it can be seen. That's the crucial thing. And another, something else dawning. which is not part of this whole conditioned network that we human beings are woven into. Through past and present thoughts and thoughts about the future. A 
simple, a simple awareness, openness. See, listening. This is not looking for the spectacular. Because then it's not simple. And it has expectation and comparison and weighing things while well, this is too, too simple. It can't be that. It can't be what the sages and masters have glowingly described. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. It happens. It's not that we're doing it. It happens. Something dawns. Something opens up. It happens to human beings and has happened to us. Since we've been around. One person said, it's an amazing thing in this retreat. I, I all of a sudden find myself back in childhood and realize there was this openness then to look and do. And I'm absolutely bothered by the momentum and, and weight of the conditioning that set in and covered all of this up or distorted it. This, this childlike openness that was there for probably all of us at one time or another, briefly longer for others, but for all of us conditioned away into the shoulds and the, the do's and don'ts the punishments and rewards, the threats and pains and hurts. And then trying to deal with all of that, spinning a, a web of, of habits, defenses, protection of, of what? of what we've been told and have told ourselves what we are, which can be discovered to be imagery, ideas. We think that thought tells us what really is, but it doesn't, it can. It tells us what it's thinking. Because there are areas in our practical life, in our scientific endeavors, technology, where thought may came, come pretty close to describing what is, and also in a limited way, but fairly corresponding, a good correspondence. But all our thoughts about ourselves and each other, the others, the enemies, the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, Buddhists, you know, that's not what is, that's just thought, dividing what is not Divided. We're not divided from each other. We're all human beings with the same capacity to think ourselves into misery, into enmity, into hostility, into separation, into suffering, or into salvation. Salvation by our religion, not by theirs.
I'm not saying we shouldn't be thinking, please, I'm not saying that. We do think. Thinking is going on. Can it become transparent at times what thoughts are going on, what their impact is, the judgments, the prejudices, the impact on ourselves, on our relationship, and not say, I shouldn't have prejudice, but watch it when it's there. Watch the anger, the fear. As a child, not having an opinion about it, a set idea that it should or should not be so. We're talking about fear yesterday in a group meeting. It came up in connection with the same question we had discussed here in the, in, in the talk about self-confidence. Sort of digging into it more. A lot of things were said, I don't remember them all. One person said it's what you didn't really say enough, something was missing. It, there is self-confidence or no self-confidence because the imagery we have about ourselves of being no good, unworthy, and then the fear of, of our failure. So maybe it's all coming down to fear, this whole thing of confidence. Someone may be so embedded and cushioned by imagery that the fear is not there of failing or having had, of course, experiences of succeeding. But fundamentally, deeply, there's fear in human beings. Fear of failing, fear of being rejected, fear of dying, not being loved, uh, dying to the affection of another being dead to the affection of another. Tremendous fear of that, which dates back to our helplessness in childhood, our utter total dependency on being cared for, which we were not always. One person saying, fear is programmed into this whole body. Every cell of the body remembers fearful incidents, past experiences. And then one person said, you know, if you can feel the fear, you're halfway there. I can't even feel it. Here we've been talking about being with something that comes up. But what if nothing comes up but numbness? Sort of a feeling of being locally anesthetized. Or totally. Well, then we'd be out. <laughs> person said, I only can tell that I'm afraid by my thoughts. I don't feel anything. I'm wondering about that. Question it more. Listen more carefully. What is there that makes the thought of fear disagreeable? And if there's nothing to be felt, how does it feel to be numb? Isn't there some tension, some bracing against something? Because there must be some counterpart to, some physical counterpart to not feeling, to the idea of not feeling. I wouldn't go with that description of myself, I feel nothing. I would suspend that, maybe up till now, but I'll, I'll listen again very carefully. Next time I feel afraid, afraid of rejection, the person said, rejection by a woman. And 
there's nothing to be felt, then just listen to the thought and the wind. Is that possible? Because it's not only what's going on in this body that's taking place in this universe. What else is there? Not looking for fireworks or the spectacular, but the, the subtle. Not even looking for it. When the mind opens up, everything is there. The warmth, the wetness, the sounds, the touch, the light, the dark. The shadows, it's all there. We don't have to strain to listen to it. Just not be so protective. Of what? And if there's protectiveness, can one listen to the tension of it, the stress, the strain? How does it feel in the body, the solar plexus, the head? Not discount what feels disagreeable. That's, that's there too. It's a sign of our aliveness. To have a headache, a backache. How does it feel? And, and to, to realize how we've discounted it because we don't like it. It's not worthy of our attention. But that's not true. Everything is worthy of attention. Everything. As it manifests this moment and may be gone the next. Ding. And I'm not saying, listen to the sounds of the wind and the, and the uh, music of the radiator in order to get away from your pain or fear or anger. Listen to the breathing so you don't have to bother with the turmoil inside. No, it's all there. It's all there and it, it does not need to be frightening. If it's, it's there, it's touched, it's not run away from, it's not judged as inferior or bad. So what is there, this instant, inside and out, what is there? If I don't know, I don't want to know, I don't need to know. Just what's there?
We will end here for today.